came into effect in uh, uh, in May. But also bear in mind that even with this scheme, you still have the economy, significant parts of the economy being under lockdown. And now with the country moving to uh, level two uh, uh, lockdown and the economy opening uh, up and economic activity resuming, uh, we should actually be seeing some take up of this scheme uh, taking place. But besides the take up of the scheme, what you should then also see is that the other measures that have been uh, uh, put in place will also uh, uh, start uh, to kick in. Put simply, think of it. If you were a restaurant owner and this scheme was available, but the economy was still under lockdown, even if you were credit worthy and you could access the facility, what would you do with it? Or let's suppose that you were a large uh, owner or a large operator in a game park, with game parks closed at the time, even with access to this facility, what would you do with it? And so with the economy opening up, we should actually see uh, the take up, not just of this facility, but also of credit flowing as a result of these other measures uh, that we have taken. The fifth measure that we had taken was that going into the March MPC uh, meeting, we got an indication from the South African bond market that there is some dysfunctionality uh, that was uh, uh, taking place, that players were not coaching prices to uh, uh, each other, and that there was a risk of a serious dislocation uh, uh, in the uh, in the market. We decided as the South African Reserve Bank to step in and uh, provide uh, liquidity. We launched a bond purchase program across the uh, yield curve. To be clear, we did this because we saw that the market was uh, dysfunctioning. But what, why is it so important for the Reserve Bank to have the market functioning? Two main reasons. The first one is that our own monetary policy execution through the repo system works on a collateral system. And because it works on a collateral system, the collateral must be priced in the market. And if the market is not functioning, you cannot establish the real price of that collateral. That is the first point. The second point is that this collateral system very much depends on the underlying market and the underlying market being the government bond market. And um, so when you had this dysfunctioning, it also meant that government auctions could not be adequately priced because we do not know what the price in the secondary market is. And so it was important for the South African Reserve Bank to get the market functioning, um, uh, functioning uh, 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 again. So it is the totality of these measures that have got to be seen uh, as a, the South African Reserve Bank's response uh, to the COVID crisis. And as the economy opens up, these things uh, should uh, begin to kick in and we should then see uh, a response uh, from uh, the, eco uh, the eco various economic players and a resumption of uh, economic activity. So let, let me leave it here and not spend time telling people what I think they would like to hear and rather take uh, questions and hear what is it that people would like to discuss and then uh, we can deal with that. Uh, Brett, the message says, remember to unmute yourself. You must unmute and yourself. Here we are unmuted. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, the first time the press has been unmuzzled by the... <laughs> Um, what I, you got me thinking there when you talked about the 100 billion and you're asking the question, what would you do? And, and yes, uh, so the, the thing that would 
you know, would concern me, and you, I think quite importantly, is that if I was a restaurant owner and I had no customers, and if I was a hotel owner and I had no customers, I would take my share of that $100 billion and I would re- use it to retrench my staff, pay off my debts, um, and then I wouldn't be contributing any more to the economy. So I presume uh, we are safeguarding against that kind of lending. Well, um, uh, you could take it and uh, return stuff. Uh, remember that you would be taking a loan, and this loan, it would be expected that you are going to repay it at some point. And for you to repay it, you need a viable business that would continue to generate income for you to repay the loan. So it wouldn't be such a smart uh, idea. But since this is the Cape Town uh, Press Club, uh, suppose that this restaurant is on a wine farm and Mm -hmm. uh, you can't even sell uh, the wine, you borrow the uh, money and do what with it. And so as the economy opens up and businesses would need working capital, you would see this thing, uh, this thing coming through. Initially, when this loan came through, and this was also a very interesting a very interesting thing in the design features, it was like that which opened up this thing and said that it is to enable the businesses they could pay their rent and so forth. But one of the things that was coming was that when I take a loan to pay the rent, so what? The business is not functioning. And so you saw the scheme being amended to include a business restart component. So those businesses now that are reopening and would like funding to restart their businesses can now access this um, from their good bankers. Thank you. Yes, that would be. Um, are you able to give us any idea what the, you know, looking at your quarterly projection model um, are you give us any idea what the contraction in the South African economy is expected to be? Uh, well, at the moment, we have got a contraction of just over 7% for, uh, for this year. Um, uh, but those figures uh, now are um, uh, outdated. Uh, we would uh, provide a new forecast now in, uh, uh, in September. Uh, there are a number of uh, 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 moving uh, parts. Um, uh, as I have said, the economy has opened up, and so you will see economic activity uh, resuming. We have got to take uh, cognizance of uh, uh, of that. But there are also other um, factors that make forecasting a nightmare in the current environment. And one has to do with the fact that uh, States SA had to make adjustments, for example, to the CPI figures that had uh, come through. Now, inflation figures are very important because when you compile GDP figures you and you want to calculate real GDP growth, you have got to deflate uh, the nominal uh, GDP. And if you are not sure what the real, the actual inflation uh, uh, is, that uh, becomes uh, that becomes. Uh, uh, tricky, but Status A had come out and spelled out that these are the adjustments that they would make um, so that the figures that they release would still be uh, credible. And the adjustments that they are making are in line with international statistical standards. Mm-hmm. And you spoke briefly about relaxing some of the regulatory, you know, allowing the, the, the banks a little bit of a leeway there. Um, I think many South Africans at this point um, are quite worried, um, given the state of the economy. And for the ordinary South African, with a cash deposit in the bank and savings account, how how safe are those? Um, or is it like VBS, where we find out after the fact, uh, when the horse is bolted? Um, I have asked my own bank, uh, which is Investec, a few times, uh, but they never quite get back to me. <laughs> um, I don't think that you should be worrying about the South African banking system. Uh, the banking system is well capitalized. Um, it has got ample liquidity. And uh, if there is a shortage of liquidity, as you have seen, the South African Reserve Bank um, stands ready to pump in the liquidity. We have, 
we have done so. Uh, if anything, at the moment, there is actually too much liquidity uh, in the system. We are quite happy uh, to leave that liquidity in the system because we want it to um, uh, generate um, uh, credit uh, credit flows, which is uh, what the intention of our uh, uh, of our policy uh, 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 was. Um, uh, but if you say that uh, your deposit and you worry about you shouldn't worry about the safety of your deposit. What you might worry about, what you might worry about, is the rate at which that deposit uh, grows uh, because the interest rates have dropped uh, uh, so much. But if you are savvy about it, you would also realize that interest rates didn't just drop. Interest rates dropped because inflation dropped so much uh, uh, as well. So um, you will still be earning, um, uh, uh, depending on the instrument you have chosen, uh, a, a some margin above uh, uh, above the inflation rate. But as things stand, the stance of monetary policy is to actually get credit uh, uh, flowing. In other ways, we are also trying to encourage you to spend. Right. Um, well, certainly under your, I think I'm fairly say, uh, credible and, and, and prudent uh, management, and you've delivered on your mandate. I mean, the inflation has been within the target for the last six years that you've been at the helm. Um, and I think your, re your reappointment confirms this confidence in your leadership. Uh, but at NASRAC, the ANC took that res resolution to nationalize the bank. Uh, the president reconfirmed that this is what will happen. Um, and then about a year later, he said that it wouldn't be prudent. Um, why are you opposed to it? I think that we have spelled out why um, uh, we are opposed uh, to that. Um, um, and quite frankly, we think that is a distraction. Uh, but we have decided to step, step away from the debate. We have decided yeah. to step away from the debate. Uh, we will engage with a government uh, process. Uh, as the legislation comes through Parliament, we will express our own views of, about those uh, uh, amendments, and hopefully we will be ahead. Um, but the nationalization debate is a debate that the, Treasure, the South African Reserve Bank is uh, no longer participating in. We will leave it to the Minister of Finance and the uh, president, it is now with the political leadership of the country. Right. I'm going to move to some of our uh, questions. Um, we've got uh, Liesl Piper uh, from Rapport, um, who says, in a previous speech, the governor mentioned that our economy could also face the risk of deflation. Um, could you elaborate on this? No, I didn't say we could face a risk of deflation. Uh, uh, Deflation is not even in our baseline. It is not even in our alternative scenario. What we are facing is disinflation, which is different from deflation. Deflation is a contraction in prices. Disinflation just means that prices are continuing to rise, but at a slower pace. Uh, so uh, deflation is not... Uh, is not uh, uh, in the picture at the moment. Now, a lot of news is certainly happening across the country. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to cross out of that. The governor of the South African Reserve Bank, the LSE, Jahanyaho, speaking with regards to uh, just his role as well as what is expected, I suppose, then out of the South African Reserve Bank and the pressure that he certainly has faced over the last couple uh, of years as well then uh, to the Cape Town Press Club. We move on.